Now any moth trappers that are watching this may think, well he's gone completely mad, I suspected he was and he seems to have really gone over the edge. Fancy moth trapping somewhere like this, a floodlit car park. But the end where I am isn't floodlit and it's fairly dark and from previous visits here to Ransom Wood have proved that the floodlights make little difference or no difference at all to the number of moths coming in at this particular site to the light which will very soon be glowing once I've switched it on. This is a really good site. So this is one of the car parks here and it's within Sherwood Forest woodland majority are oaks and there's pines and of course the good old silver birch and there's been a number of moths already flying around and we're on March the 12th so numbers should be increasing and certainly species will be increased on the last time that I trapped which I believe was at Missing Carl on 14th of February I don't know where the time goes anyway it's time to switch the light on Well, they're fired and up and running. I've never trapped at this part of Ransom Wood before. Both times previously have been in front of the old hospital building, which is absolutely beautiful, especially when lit up at night. So, while we wait for the light to get full brightness, it's tea time. And here's the fabulous Ransom Hospital the former hospital that normally provides the backdrop to when I do trap here at Ransom Wood. It's an absolute joy to trap moths and be looking at this building. Beautiful. Long since been closed as a hospital. This whole site now has been transformed into various business units and very nicely done too. The woodland has been maintained and it really is beautifully situated and the buildings are beautifully set in this old area of former Sherwood Forest. Now the first moths are in, we've had singles of four species including Clouded Drab, Common Quaker, March Moth and this, this is a brindled pug and in all honesty is likely to be the commonest moth that we get this evening very common in woodland and if you do trap in woodland you'll almost certainly get lots of these to mv light it appears relatively drab when you first glance at it but they are beautifully marked if rather subtly marked various shades of browns almost appearing grey under the MV light itself here and there are several dashes and flecks on each of the four wings really is a very attractively marked moth and one to learn certainly if you're new to trapping and this will turn up in suburban gardens you're highly likely to get this this may be one of your first pugs that you ever trap if you trap early in the year so, Brindle's Pug, amongst a small selection of species now, I mentioned so far. A few minutes ago, when talking about Brindle's Pug, that Brindle's Pug could be one of the first pugs of the year to be attracted to your garden light or on those first nights of trapping in any given year. And it will be. 
and so will this one this isn't the same species and this is quite a nicely marked double striped pug they do vary but there are usually enough features to guide you to the correct id even in very worn specimens that dark area towards the base of each forewing there's an even darker sort of leading edge on that or darker stripe and that's one of the things that will remain visible on even the most worn and damaged species and normally there is a second sort of stripe that goes across the wings this one just has a hint of one there look so two double stripe pugs in nice to get two of them there's a small quaker just dropped in as well so we're doing very very well typical early spring selection of species so far got a temperature of 12 centigrade at the moment and that's just fabulous just right it's been a long time since I have trapped purely because the weather hasn't been suitable it's either been too cold or too wet used or both on occasions we've had no bad weather at all it's just usually been raining or has rained and quite often if you trap immediately after rain and the temperature drops you won't catch a deal no matter what light you use and so tonight's minimum forecasted temperature is going to be 11 centigrade and that's lovely and it looks like we might have several milder nights so you may get a few more moth trapping videos now that conditions allow it's not worth coming out and the effort to load the car and unload the car and run the trap for two or three hours when the temperature's below eight degrees centigrade you'll catch some moths you'll always catch some moths I remember once netting a Cleris Cristana, my first ever, in the car headlights at Eakin Meadows, and everywhere it was completely white over at the time. It was fairly late on in the evening, and I used to patrol the roads of Eakin in the car just to see what moths I could net. And this, the Cleris Cristana, it was the only moth that I saw that night, was fluttering across the eagering to Kersall Road while everywhere including the road and the hedgerows and all the vegetation were white over with a severe frost hardy little things are moths well the species list is increasing and increasing nicely Dionia fagella has just come in and so is this beauty and this literally is a beauty and there are two of these now this is oak beauty and it does everything it says on the tin quite frankly this moth not all those early spring moths are dull drab and brown a lot are but this is certainly not one of those it's a fabulous moth and this one has settled down surprisingly quickly they're very energetic these when they come into light I've always found take ages to settle down if indeed they do and sometimes some individuals can take an hour before they will assume this resting position but what an absolute beautiful moth a real corker this is oak beauty you may well get this in suburban gardens fabulous thing the conditions are lovely although occasionally it gets quite windy so i'm having to sort of weigh the ground sheet down a little bit but the windiness or breeziness doesn't usually last long a few minutes and then it dies down again and it's fine like this beautiful almost mid-march evening and now this one's settled i can show you this this may well turn out to be here in numbers this evening depending on how long a trap for and this is a yellow horned the markings vary quite a bit on this but they're all pretty much the same thing but some are better marked than others it's a very attractive moth and another of those early flying species 
common over most of the Nottinghamshire, but especially so in the Sherwood Forest area where it's probably in its greatest numbers to be honest. A nice moth all the same. It's so nice to get out early and catch these early spring moths. And the yellow horn here is a beauty. I have had this once at home just on the single occasion and that surprised me really being in the centre of a small market town. I didn't really expect it but a fabulous moth. I keep getting periods of drizzle this evening but it's just stopped again. It came down fairly heavy as heavy as drizzle can get but everywhere remains relatively dry and we're up to eight oak beauties now and a similar number of yellow horned as well but in general the moth activity is a little bit less than I'd expected it to be but it's still early days only an hour of this session has gone but we're on to a number of species I'll just go through the list here got a March Moth, Common Quaker, Brindled Pug, Clouded Drab, Double Striped Pug, Small Quaker, just a single, then Oak Beauty, and Yellow Horned, a couple of Dionia Fagella, Agonoptrix Heracleana, Chestnut, an Early, Early Thorn, and Ipsilofa Ostella. That's the catch list at the moment. Pretty much what you would expect, but I did think that there would be more Dionia fagella, especially. That's a very common moth of early spring and one of the most requested to be identified on any sort of internet forum or Facebook page. One for everybody to learn, and it's a species that will feature over the next few videos, no doubt. But a nice list, and that wind has drop down so we'll see what else comes in and now we're gone and a nice species list well the moths are continuing to come in 11 centigrade it is a great temperature for trapping in fact it's 12 as I look at it now plenty of moths coming in. We're up to about 10 oak beauties now. There's been times when Dillis and I have had a sheet full of oak beauties and yellow horned. I'll try and sort out a photo and put a photograph in here. And that was at Sherwood Forest many years ago now. But two beautiful moths to trap or aim to trap for in early in the year. But from now on the species list and the number of moths coming on the wing will steadily increase, especially the species. It's funny because mild nights similar to this in February and certainly in March you can often get far more numbers than in May. May you will get more species, that's pretty much guaranteed, but you'll get fewer moths of those species. Quite often it can be just ones and twos of most species during May, and you'd think that numbers would increase through April and May, but not necessarily. Indeed they don't. Moth numbers and the number of species coming into light doesn't usually pick up until we get into June but there are plenty of moths and species to go for before we get to June we don't want to wish the year away it's been frustrating this year really in terms of weather wise and the first sort of 10 days or so of March were classic March nowadays we came into easterly winds it was cloudy all the time it was cool during the day and cooler at night and so 
wasn't able to get out. It didn't warrant getting out. But hopefully we're in for a run of mild nights. There's more beautiful oak beauties come in. They often come in quite away from the light and when it's flat and relatively stony like this you can see them coming in 10 20 yards away and then they'll gradually work their way to the light and attack me did you see that it was vicious but a beautiful moth although they're all beautiful in their way they still don't get the coverage and appreciation that butterflies get. There again, butterflies are easy to access for everybody, really. Well, good numbers of oak beauty have come in and continue to come in. Not huge numbers of moths, but very pleasing numbers nonetheless. And to see a number of this handsome moth is very pleasing. We've got about 15 or so individuals now. In fact, there's two just on the side of the box, just out of shot. But it's a fabulous species to catch. And if you've not seen it, I urge you to get your trap out and give it a go. March is the best time to see this moth. The markings vary, but either way, whatever oak beauty you catch, it's always going to be a cracking moth. Eight thirty, and moths have started to drop in a bit more frequently now. That's not really a surprise because quite often, this time of year, especially in the time that you trap during March, you'll get an initial flurry of moths, usually small numbers of many of the species that you're going to trap, and then it goes somewhat quiet. But after about 8 o'clock or so, moths start to come in. At the moment, it's Quakers that are really coming in. There's another one sort of zooming in now, but Oak Beauties are also still coming in. That quietness is usually down to either moths actually pairing and coupling, or feeding, or both. And you'll know when moths have stopped feeding, because they'll start coming in, in with increased numbers. One of the most important nectar sources for moths in early spring is goat sallow. I can't emphasize enough how important goat sallow is to early flying moths. And site managers really need to bear that in mind. It's a vital plant, not only for the early flowering moths, but also for early flying bees as well and a whole host of diptera and other invertebrates but for moths goat sallow is very important and so once they're fed or mated or both then they generally start to come into light and that's what's happening now lovely and mild it's still 12 centigrade and got two new species that have come in one is this one which I'm hoping if I can tap it out of the pot it will remain dormant enough to film and it's grey shoulder knot grey shoulder knot's a moth that I haven't trapped for years I can't remember the last time that I trapped it 
certainly well over five years although I've seen the odd specimen on trunks or on walls you often see them in the daytime and they are conspicuous when on a tree trunk beautiful grey moth as you can see from the photo which I've hopefully remembered to put in the other moth that's come in is an engrailed and engrailed nothing particularly exciting a common moth one that you'll get in the garden fairly widespread as well especially common in Sherwood Forest woodland so it's not unexpected to find it flying around here well it's gone half past nine and I've stopped actually surprisingly longer than I was anticipating when I arrived here but that breeze or indeed wind is annoying and keeps lifting the sheet up even though the sheet has now become slightly damp but it's been a really good session a pleasing species list an expected species list for this kind of site at this time of the year and hopefully some more mild nights to come so pack up time and it's time to switch the light off